So we've spent a little over two hours on this demo so far, right? And this is where we are. And we have all our components. We even have more than five because with internal compositing. And all I need to do now is kind of make those final decisions about edges. So for instance, I'm just going to cut this one down instead of trying to color correct it. And then make it a little grassy. Now remember, selections can go between layers. So I'm doing it from this, but then I can also take that selection and do it from the tree. You know, so then it's a little too sharp, but you can cut away from multiple layers all at once. And if this was your full-time job and you're cleaning up a frame for a movie or for a video game or for a, a poster or for an ad campaign, this is all about learning the skills to get this stuff right when you need it. And then you can always just go in with your eraser. And affect them directly. What's great about erasing when you have overlap is then it also gives you kind of a mix of the colors between. And then you can dodge and burn and you just have control of everything. I'm just going to do little taps to kind of bite away from the edges of the tree. Especially where the lighting doesn't quite work. I could also burn it. I'm using that pressure sensitive brush. And sometimes you're just searching for the edge that kind of works with the lighting, like this little hillside and that rock. I, I want to look like my eye is looking past the grass onto the sharper rocks behind. And we can kind of just blend them together. Not terrible. I wanted to get rid of this tree. That element. And then if I want to sharpen this tree, because I, I made it bigger, so that's going to soften it, I can use the sharpen tool and just hit it on the edges a little bit. And that will increase contrast between pixels. But it's like increasing the ISO on a digital camera. You will get more digital noise the more you do it. So you don't want to overdo it. And how do you know when to stop? You don't really. <laughs> you just run out of time. You can see that as an advantage or a disadvantage of digital art is that you can, can just keep working. 
but I do know we are getting close to deadline, so you want to think about what are the final adjustments that are most glaring. Where can you make the most impact in your last class time on the assignment? And I'm going to get rid of that electric blue. And now I'm going to check my corners with my guides. And this is why I leave a little extra space. You see how there's that kind of arbitrary line there that doesn't work well. But I want it to go down because I want that tree to be contained. I want that little edge. So I need to find that layer. Here it is. And then I want to go back to my old transform tool, one of the most useful tools from the past. I'm going to distort, and I'm just going to tug it down a little bit so that it goes over that edge. Good. And then this one, I don't like how that lines up. That's called a tangency. And then just disappears. So I want to play with this layer a little bit transform it, distort it, and just place that corner a little lower, kind of set it down. And you see all those smooth transitions, they just kind of work. All that lighting and stuff we've worked on just kind of works. Kind of sits down in place. And it's nice if this can actually go over that ridge. But I want to stretch it out maybe a little bit this way, a little bit back. There we go. And I can hit that with sharpen in some places, right? Very low strength, always below 20. And then the sky it has this weird little remnant in the corner. That probably makes sense if you see the whole image, but doesn't quite make sense when I just see that corner. So I'm going to just go ahead and tug that with warp down below the horizon. So that's why I have my guide showing. So I can find the best composition and then make sure everything's nicely visible within it. Okay, now I can crop to those guides because I've checked all my corners. Making sure I'm showcasing at least five different references. So let's go through them. I've got my tree, got my rock, got these rocks, got those rocks, got those mountains and these mountains, and then the backgrounds. So that's one, two, three, four five, six, seven layers, making my surreal high desert. Now, I could go in and I could burn certain elements, like put a shadow under this tree. I could do highlights, maybe want to burn a little bit under this rock, since it's so close to the moon. So it can intensify that contrast a little bit in the mid-tones. There's just a lot of like little touch-ups I can do. But if I want to make big overall adjustments, there's one final compositing technique I want to show you. So I'm going to save it. And that's called a texture overlay. So this will be the last thing I do before we turn it in because we're closing in on 1130. I'm going to go to just a Google image search because these don't need to be super high resolution. And I'm going to look for a misty texture overlay. It could be misty, it could be sandy, it can be foggy. But texture overlays are things that designers use to kind of glaze over settings. Kind of gives atmosphere to everything. And you want to find it without, without watermarks. So if you go to Pixabay and look, I would just look for something like mist, right? Because if you say texture overlay, you might get some, 
but it's more of a a professional thing. So so I just do misty. Sometimes just clouds are really helpful. So there's lots of photos of clouds, right? So if I find some clouds, for instance, let's just do this one. And I download it. I'll go ahead and download it big. But I'll show you two different ones. So I'll download that and I'll do from Google. I just don't want watermarks. These used to all be, you know, late stage capitalism. It used to be people just sharing resources. But now, <laughs> now there are so many that they want you to buy. But I don't need it very large. This one's only 600 by 337. And the professional ones are usually in grayscale. But I'm just going to drag and drop that in. And then I'm going to stretch it over the top of everything. Really big. That's going to soften it out. It's OK to distort it, like hold down Shift. OK, now I'm going to take its opacity way down. And you're going to see that that starts to kind of blend everything into a similar atmosphere. And then, just like I did with all my layers, I can play with something like hue saturation <coughs> and colorize this to make it a certain color. So that's why texture overlays are usually grayscale, because you can totally customize the color effect they have. And it's like looking through colored mist, right? Just like when you wake up early in the morning in the mountains and there's like dew in the air and everything's a little soft. You can brighten it. You can darken it. You can play with how saturated it is. These are texture overlays. And if you find kind of the right way to use them, they can really make a big difference. And then, of course, you can just keep playing with opacity until you find it where you want it. And you can selectively erase away from them with low opacity, really large, soft-edged erasers. So if I want that moon to glow really strong, kind of radiate out from there. Right? Make some sense? You can also try syncing the texture overlay down through your layers to increase the amount of depth you have. Right. So. Maybe I don't need it so much in my foreground layers, but it's very helpful in the far background or in the middle ground. So I like to kind of erase it away with that in mind. And then I don't like to just rely on one. So I have the one I downloaded, this one, move that on top, right? Move it to the very top, stretch it out to fill. This is a high resolution one, but you see it doesn't matter much. I'm going to rasterize it so I can erase away from it. I'm going to be at 100% first, get rid of all these <laughs> things, right? And now I can just let the clouds kind of part, right? And I can erase away wherever I don't want that texture. It's a way of simulating lack of focus as well, while not actually losing focus in your asset layers. And then, of course, I can dodge and burn it. So if I want that mist to be a little bit darker down here, I can burn it rather than erasing it away. Or around the edges. This is called vignetting. So this is all using texture overlays. Ooh, make bands of dark in the sky. Right, so that's one. That's the other. You can see how they make a big difference. So I'll make them a little bit more subtle and even play with blending modes. I really like pin light with these because we'll only pick it up in a few spots. 